sustainable development. Robert Ross is associate at the Fairbanks Center for Chinese Studies at Harvard University. Well, Henry Kissinger brought to American foreign policy a global perspective on international security and international strategy. Whereas most practitioners might know the Middle East problem or know the Taiwan problem, he understood the larger picture and the conflicts of interest for all countries, rather than simply driving American foreign policy. And so he could look at U.S.-China relations, he could look at U.S.-China-Soviet relations, and understand the strategic implications of the trends and then take advantage of them for American security. And that was the foundation of the opening to China and U.S.-China detente rapprochement and eventually the normalization of U.S.-China relations. Not everyone, though, will remember Kissinger warmly, perhaps. He was a divisive figure, of course. Uh, how do you think he'll be remembered? Quite divisive. He's, his prominence um, creates a certain magnet for criticism. And so he is criticized for his Chile policy, for his Cambodia policy, for his um, Pakistan policy. But I think in retrospect, um, the sins of Henry Kissinger are no worse than, say, the American occupation of Iraq. Um, following the second Iraq war. Um, so it's a, it's a reflection of his prominence more than anything else. One hopes history will be kinder to him and look at him in a larger historical perspective than the contemporary perspective. He's, of course, known for uh, organizing that rapprochement uh, between China and the U.S., uh, and he maintained that close link with China throughout his life. How will his death uh, be being marked there? Well, of course, he did bring to U.S.-China relations a major breakthrough that eased the Cold War burdens of both countries and essentially transformed the Cold War. The United States went from having to battle two great powers to just one. China went from battling two great powers to just one. And the U.S.-China cooperation posed a major challenge to Soviet foreign policy. Going forward, one has to ask, to what extent does that global perspective, that security perspective, influence contemporary U.S. foreign policy and U.S. policy toward China. And one fears that since the Kissinger era and since the retirement of his disciples, if you will, we see in the White House, we see in the State Department, problem solvers. Um, do you understand the Middle East? How do you solve that problem? Um, the Korea policy, what do you do? Um, and how do you promote American interests? And the global perspective, the security perspective, the strategic perspective has been missing. And so when one looks at China, the dominant perspective is, what does America do about the rise of China? And it's not, we have a conflict of interest, how do we manage it? The whole concept of a, concept of a conflict of interest has been an eclipse in recent years, and that's one of the reflections of the demise of the Kissinger generation. So I fear the rise of China, with the transformation in American perspectives on international politics and a new generation of policymakers, Kissinger's own personal perspective, his strategic perspective, will be missing from American foreign policy and thus also from U.S.-China relations. So what will Kissinger's legacy be, do you think? Well, there's no substitute for his breakthrough with China and his Cold War diplomacy. The U.S.-China breakthrough was critically important to the Cold War, and of course his um, relation with the Soviet Union was equally important with arms control. So those are two major accomplishments that no one can take away. Those who are going to look at human rights issues on American intervention in the developing world, the Vietnam War, will be concerned about the intervention in Cambodia, the Chile, the Pakistan problem. But I think over the longer run, these major Cold War initiatives will take a dominant place in our understanding of 